three, two, one. Sweet. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Hanging with Janky. As you can see, friends, I have my new thing all set up, and I'm using it today to speak with you through a recording over Audacity, which is spectacular. It's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. But seriously, this is actually a really awesome new mic. I've been super happy with it. I was a little quiet during demo day, but I think I have that all sorted now, so I think I should be good on this recording. But it, it has been just smooth as butter to listen to me on this thing. <laughs> Plus, it has this really cool thing over here on the side. It's called a, a high pass filter. It's one of the many features this particular microphone has. But the nice thing about this is whenever you turn on, it takes out low decibel sound out of the recording. So for example, whenever my PC over here is pumping out its, its air, its little heart out, trying to keep itself cool while I'm playing games, it, it takes that out of the audio recording so I don't have to finagle around that which is nice so yeah i've been super happy with it but that's not what we're here to talk about at all we're here to talk about channel stuff and subs and gaming news so let's get started with that shall we we shall so first up what went up on the channel so we have swotor episodes two and three ladies and by the stars a rebel stooge <laughs> no not rebel stooge <sighs> republic Republic Stooge, why can't I speak? Nah, but it's been really fun playing that game with Joe. Um, it's it's super exciting. The reason that two of them went up this week, in case you were wondering, was that we recorded a ton. We recorded an hour and a half of footage. And I think the goal is to get off of Ord Mantel before Rebel 1 comes out, or Rogue 1 comes out. And that's next week on the 16th is whenever Rogue One comes out. So we just, I think, I don't know. I'm trying to keep it moving because secret, secret, there is a, there is a plan. There isn't a method. There is a method to the madness. There's a plan and you, it all will be revealed when we get off Ord Mantel. But um, the point is, I think we're trying to get off before Rogue One, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is with that series. But I do know is that I'm having a blast. And I love Star Wars. And it's been a grand old time. And I rib into Joe hard for being not only a trooper, but also making some dark side choices. Mm. Dude, don't, don't, be, don't be a Republic stooge. Don't be a Republic stooge. Also, we had an unboxing video for things like this lovely thing right here and this thing up here the pop filter and this lovely arm but also a poster for undertale that's sitting back there that i haven't gotten a frame for yet but i'll get around to that i'll get around to that but it was just a fun little video just talking about new stuff to the channel talk uh, i talk a bit more about um all of this that i got recently and yeah it's good all the time so you can definitely go check that out too also, we got The Witcher Part 20 up, and actual story stuff happened again. We did an autopsy on a dead guy, on a crown witness. And it turns out, through pure coincidence, and perhaps just a little bit of me checking what the correct answers were, uh, <laughs> on basically no evidence whatsoever, we managed to clear everyone except for um except we found out who the actual killer was which it turns out it's azar javed and he was disguising himself as raymond the detective i suspected a little okay because every time i got near raymond my medallion shook my medallion was only supposed to shake when i'm near an enemy so that was suspicious to me i pointed that out that was legitimate but the fact that i was able to deduce that it was him that killed the crown witness was completely coincidental <laughs> so it it is what it is but no it's a good episode and then next time we're going to the graveyard which will be exciting hopefully maybe i don't know we'll see how that works out and then there was demo day this week and for demo day i played inside yeah they just released a demo for inside on steam probably because it just won the best indie game award at the game awards recently 
it's a really nice game. I really enjoy that game. Like, I mean, obviously the art, you know, because everybody talks about how awesome the art is. And the music, too, because the music is really awesome. And, and I remember I talked on an earlier hang with Janky about how they actually run that music through a human skull, and that's how they got it to sound the way it did, which is super cool. But no, just as, like, a general game. Like, it's a side-scrolling platformer with, like, puzzle elements. I, they put it together really nicely. And, and I like that whenever you do come across that puzzle sort of thing, like solving the situation. It's actually related to the story. It's not like non sequitur. I talk about that a bit more at the end of the demo day, but yeah, definitely go check that out because Inside is an awesome game. And if you haven't played it, you should at least try the demo um, because it's really fun. Okay, so what's coming up on the channel? Here's what we have coming up on the channel. We have SWOTOR 4, Star Wars The Old Republic 4, where we will be finishing Ornament Town, maybe? Maybe? Joe tells me we're like three quarters of the way through, so I assume we're close. I assume we're in the ballpark, so hopefully that. And then The Witcher Part 21, where we'll be going to the graveyard. And also Demo Day, and I already have the thing picked out for Demo Day. It's going to be a sweet project that I found on Kickstarter. I won't tell you more than that, other than it is some, it, it is based in pixel art and it's based on old school RPGs. So I'm very excited to get started on that this week. Also, just some general thoughts on some other games that have been around lately. Uh, Hello Neighbor, I tried playing the Alpha 2 update of that. It did not agree with my computer. <laughs> but it looks like they've had a lot of really cool story elements to it. I just haven't gotten a chance to really play it yet um because it's kind of a little screwed up so i'll probably just watch someone else play it honestly like jack or someone and then uh the alpha 3 update will be coming december 22nd i'm really looking forward i, I really love the final art style on that game i like uh they've added a lot of new mechanics to it like looking through keyholes and um just, just some general updates that i think will be really cool and really helpful so i'm looking forward to that Gigantic, which is a new third-person MOBA game. Uh, they just released the beta for it. I'm actually playing that on stream shenanigans. It will have been yesterday by the time this comes out, because I'm starting to understand the timeline of when my videos release as opposed to when I'm recording them. But the point is, I'll be playing it tonight. It looks really fun. I've already messed around with it a bit. It kind of has a confusing upgrade tree, but other than that, I've actually really liked it. Then... Oh, The Last Guardian. Oh, that game looks so awesome. I don't have a PlayStation, though. I've heard great things. I've heard that people are loving it, but I don't have a PlayStation, so I can't play it. <laughs> but it looks so cute. Uh, uh, that's fine. Anyway, time to move on to that lovely part of the day where we go and thank some subscribers. Woo! Okay, so first up, we have Anna Makota. I hope I pronounced that correctly. She does um, maker videos, DIY. Um, just different craft things, holiday pillows, hats, glittery, oh, lip balms, that's what it is. Snowboarding vlog, sweet. She has 1,024 followers, or subscribers, I can't speak it all day, but you should definitely go check her out, she seems really cool, and thank you, Anna, for subbing my channel. And then we have Charlotte O'Connor, who just has a couple of vlogs, she has four subscribers on her channel, just some sweet little vlogging videos it just generally seems very nice so thank you charlotte for also subbing my channel and those are our two subs for the week which brings the grand total to 150 subs which is spectacular ah that's so awesome and as for what i will do for 150 i didn't have any like super big video plans but i do think what i want to do is make a little video that's all about what i love about you guys. Maybe a list goal. Maybe like a top 10. I'll do like a top 10. Top 10 things that I love about my subscribers because there's a lot to love there, guys. And of course, thank you all so much for, for subbing the channel and for enjoying my content. I hope you continue to enjoy and I will continue to try and make better content for you guys moving forward. So thank you all again for subbing the channel. Hopefully the sound didn't get super weird there because I'm trying to see if that even picks me up when I'm off to the side. Oh no, it totally does. So I should be good if I'm up here. I'm just kind of like parallel to it now. But I think that might actually pick me up a little better. Mm, the pops might be in there though, because I'm not in front of the pop filter. That's fine. 
Okay, so let's move on to some gaming news. There's lots to talk about this week, starting with the PlayStation experience. Actually, to be perfectly honest with you, most of what I would have talked about about the PlayStation experience I kind of covered last week with the Death Stranding thing and the Crash Bandicoot remaster, and I don't really care that much about the PS4 Pro. I don't hear tons of great things about it, to be honest. I hear that most of the games that are released for it right now are kind of like, uh, they're pretty bad ports. What I will say is that they announced Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which features Nadine Ross, who was just delightful in Uncharted 4, and also Chloe Frazier, who's a fan favorite, and apparently they're teaming up to do something, I'm not sure what, but it'll be cool, probably. Also, Naughty Dog announced The Last of Us 2, which everyone is super excited about. I've never played The Last of Us, so I'm not, like, super on that train, but I'm given to understand that it's, like, an amazing game, so it's very exciting that they announced The Last of Us 2. Woo! Now let's move over into my home territory, Nintendo, because they've been up to lots of fun things lately. First, we'll start with some updates on the Nintendo Switch, because they just announced that to the virtual console they are adding some GameCube games. That was a weird sentence construction that I just said there. Anyway, Nintendo announced that they will be porting some awesome GameCube games, such as Super Mario Sunshine, and also Super Smash Bros. Melee, and some other sweet, sweet GameCube titles that everybody loves, over to the Virtual Console, because they are running smooth as butter on the Switch's processing system. Was that also a weird sentence? That may have also been a weird sentence. The point is that the Switch runs them, so they're bringing GameCube games to the Virtual Console, which is awesome! Also, Jimmy Fallon tested out the Nintendo Switch on The Tonight Show not that long ago, and it looks like they were just having a grand old time. I mean, they were playing Breath of the Wild. I am more excited than ever for that game. I'm going to be honest, I was watching the video of them playing on The Tonight Show, and I let out a throaty chuckle that I did not entirely mean to let out, but I was just so delighted. It was kind of like, <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's my, that's my delighted chuckle. That's like, I'm so excited that I can't hold back chuckle. And that, that video definitely made me chuckle like that. It was good. Also, at the same time, they tested out Super Mario Run. And there was a particular amount of pressure on Jimmy Fallon to perform because Miyamoto was sitting in the audience watching him play. So that was exciting. But Super Mario Run looks awesome. It's got that auto speedrunner thing. Basically, from what I can tell of it, he runs, you tap to jump, and that's most of the game. But you collect coins, you make it through the levels, you of course have hidden areas and things you can go to if you time your jumps right. It's basically like a Mario Game Boy game, but you don't have to actually move forward on your own. He just moves forward by himself, and then you just have to command him to jump. I actually recently read an article on Gama Sutra from Miyamoto, who talks about how games like Super Mario Run are a nice introduction for younger gamers to a series like Mario, which has increasingly complex 3D worlds, you know? Every game they make, they add new elements to Mario, so it's really nice to have an app like Super Mario Run that's just sort of a stripped-down version of Mario so that people can get introduced to the game and then they're interested in playing more, which I think is actually a very smart technique. Way to go, Miyamoto. You really thought that one through. It, it was a good article, too. I might link that below. Actually, they also announced on that same episode of Jimmy Fallon that there would be a demo available of Super Mario Run in the Apple Store, which was super exciting until I realized that they didn't actually mean the online Apple Store. They meant the physical Apple Store. And there are no physical Apple Stores near me, so that made me sad. But it's really not too long to the release. I think... I don't know if they have an actual release date. I want to say they do, and I want to say it's like the 22nd? the 21st or the 22nd of December. But I mean, that's that's not a super long wait, so I can wait, I can wait. But it looks cool, I'm excited for it. And actually, taking a step back real quick to the Miyamoto at Tonight Show thing, everyone on the internet has been wigging out because he was wearing a shirt and it had Mario on it, but it was like Mario and samurai armor, and everyone is super suspecting that that has something to do with the Mario game that we'll be releasing for the Switch. And everyone's just like, what's that about? What's that about, Miyamoto? What, what are you up to? What are you up to? Let us know. Tell us more. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued, Miyamoto. Let us know. What are you doing? Yeah, so everyone's, everyone's interested by that. 
other stuff going on. Overwatch is starting their Christmas event December 13th, and I'm sure all of us will be looking forward to Reinhardt Santa Claus, whom I'm hoping is the one that they turn into Santa Claus, because that would be spectacular. Then Anna can be Mrs. Claus, and then Mercy can be like Rudolph or something. I don't know. I don't know. The important thing is that Reinhardt needs to be Santa, and, and Anna needs to be Mrs. Claus. And then everyone else can just be whoever they want to be. Oh my god, 76 can be Ebenezer Scrooge. Super exciting stuff, guys. Super exciting stuff. Speaking of first-person shooters, South Korea just passed an interesting new law about using aimbots. So according to PVP Live, whom as far as I can tell is the first person to report on this, uh, the South Korean parliament has passed an amendment to a law on the gaming industry. I'm not sure what the original law is, <laughs> because I looked at it, but it's in Korean and I can't read Korean so I have no idea what it says. But basically what the amendment is, is that um, any manufacturing and distributing programs that are not allowed by the gaming company and its terms of service are now directly illegal. So that includes aimbots, hacking programs, scripters, basically anything that's not covered under terms of service is now illegal. And the penalty is a maximum of five years in jail or $43,000 in fines, which is crazy. Apparently, aimbotting has been a major problem in South Korea recently, particularly in the esports scene. And before, it was just like you would get banned, but then people would just make new accounts, so it didn't really solve the problem, so they passed this new law, which works, I think. But I th one of the main concerns that a lot of people have is that by passing this law, mods that don't like help the player but are just cool mods to have might become illegal now. Just like, I don't know. I, I think, I mean, obviously they made the law for like esports, but for example, if someone was playing Skyrim and they created some awesome mods for that, would that be illegal? I mean, that's sort of the question here. But the main point is that Generally, I think it's a helpful rule to have because aimbots are literally the worst things you can come across in the world. It just, they suck. They suck whenever people use aimbots, guys. Don't use them. They're, it, it just makes everything frustrating and it makes the game so much more unenjoyable. And plus, you don't get the, the joy of getting that headshot all on your own. You're using an aimbot to get it and then it's not even like a headshot at all. It's very sad. Moving on with gaming news, we have, oh, the White House Gameathon stream. Oh, this is super awesome. So, over at the White House, they are doing a thing on December 12th. They're having an awesome game streamathon. It's going to be live on Twitch. They're going to bring in some esports players. They're going to play games like Rocket League, Street Fighter V. Uh, they also said they're going to have some non-competitive games too, so I don't know what all is on the agenda, to be honest. But basically, it's all about encouraging people to sign up for the National Health Care Plan by the December 15th deadline before the new year starts, and it probably maybe gets repealed, or at least tries to get repealed. So, <laughs> it'll be cool to watch at least. There's an awesome promotional ad with Shaq in it, so that's always fun. And I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But I think it'll just be a fun time, especially from the White House, and maybe we'll see President Obama play some stuff, which could be fun. Speaking of streaming for causes, uh, Cringemas was also this weekend, Friday and Saturday. So it, it will be over by the time this gets out, but it's a thing that PewDiePie is doing over on his YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure that Jack has some sort of stream shut up on his channel too, possibly Mark as well. Because I know that he's in on it. From what I can tell on Revel Mode, it looks like Cry is also there and Emma Blackery is also there, probably. I'm not sure. Basically, it's the whole Revel Mode crew, so uh, I don't think Dodger's in on this one. But uh, Kick the JP, uh, Quebble, Pop, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's basically the Revel Mode people. And they're streaming for Red, which is an AIDS charity. They help people all over the world, but uh, specifically a lot in Africa because AIDS is obviously a very big problem there. And they basically provide medicine and they try to create an AIDS-free generation, which is an awesome goal to have. And one of the other major things that they do is they try to prevent babies from getting the AIDS passed from their mothers because that's a thing that happens is whenever the mom has AIDS, it can get past the babies, but there are medicines you can take that help 
prevent that disease from transferring over. And that's part of what Red does. So they do awesome work. You can totally check out their website. I'll link that below too. But they're just an awesome organization and PewDiePie and the Revel Mode Gang are doing a stream for them and it's called Cringe Miss. I can only guess why. I imagine it's very cringy. But Jack and Mark and PewDiePie are there. Cry's in on it. It looks like Emma is in on it. Probably also PewDiePie Marisa is there. I'm sure it's just a grand old time. Also, there's lots of pictures on their Twitter page right now with them wearing like ugly Christmas sweaters and dabbing. Are they dabbing? God, just the worst. Well, that's why it's called Cringemas, folks. That's why it's called Cringemas. And that's pretty much all I had. Ooh. <coughs> oh, that was gross. So, that's pretty much all I have this week as far as gaming news goes. I hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, I was going to talk about EA Originals. Ah, uh, but that's kind of old news. That's not new news. You know what, I'll just write an article about it and then you guys can look at the article. Although they, they just added a new game to it called Sea of Solitude. You know what, I'll just cover it. So EA Originals is a program that Electronic Arts started. Basically it's helping to promote indie games that might not otherwise get the credit that they deserve. But they basically look for, as far as I can tell, beautiful indie games and then they help uh, publish and promote them. And at E3, when they announced the program, they showed off the first game on the list, which is Fee, which you should totally check out. I talked about it on a previous Hanging with Janky. It's a beautiful game. It's, it almost kind of gives off like a Spyro the Dragon feel, but it's this beautiful thing. And it's all about like nature versus industrialization. And at least that's the impression I get, but it just looks beautiful and you should definitely check it out. But they just added a new game to their lineup called Sea of Solitude. Again, a beautiful game. It actually reminds me of one that Jesse played for uh, a Fan Friday once, but I can't remember what the name of that game was. But basically, the idea is that you kind of go into this world, and it's sort of a world constructed of, like, memories and monsters, but the monsters aren't trying to attack you. You're just trying to, like, live with them. But th the point of it is that you're trying to figure out your own story, and it's sort of, like, all happening in your head, and you're playing as this girl named Kay, and you're guiding her across this sea because the entire place is flooded and it's a really cool game. You should look it up, but it, I mean, as far as I can tell, EA Originals is an awesome program, especially with games like the ones that they've added. I mean, I think those are the only two they have on their lineup right now, but both of them just look amazing and I can't wait for them to get released. I don't know that either of them actually have official release dates yet, but if they do, I'll let you know because they look beautiful. You should definitely go check those out. And that is all I have this week for gaming news. So I hope you guys enjoyed another week with me. I know I certainly enjoyed myself. If you did, you can totally leave a like down below or comments, positive or negative. Or if you have gaming news or if you have things that you want to talk about, feel free to leave that below too. I do love to read and respond to all of your comments. So feel free to say whatever you want. Well, maybe not like whatever you want, but I'm giving you license to say basically anything. You know what? I'll moderate it later. It's fine. But more than that, I hope you have a lovely day, evening, or whenever you happen to be watching, and thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. And until the next time, this is Janky Shenanigans, signing out. I'm going to have to cut so much of this out. God, so drunk. So drunk. Okay. Oh look, a room full of explosives. Oh, that got silly real fast. Fiddlesticks is the worst. That was my muffled scream noise, by the way. Thanks for stepping on my face. Here's the three gold. People here are weird. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.